But the next race will be the K2 men's 1,000 metres. We can see the world champions of Spain, Olympic champions in Australia with a stunning race that surprised us all in that super quick time of 3.15. If we think back to Tokyo, what a performance that was. One of the real performances uh, of the event. Thomas Green and John van der Westhausen wrestling the gold medal from the likes of the Germans and the Czechs. The Germans in a different form this time round. We've not got Hoff and Schopf, but we have got a crew to watch out for in lane five. So just going through the lineup, very experienced. Peter Geller in the front of that boat, the Slovakian boat there. He's been in many, many K4s and K2s over the years that have won medals at world and European level. He's partnering up with Akos Gashkal this time round. In lane two, we've got the Norwegian brothers, the Vold brothers, Amund and Eisvind. There they are, Eisvind, I should say and very good over the long distances these two so really both of them very good over 5,000 meters and Ivan back in the European Championships 2018 he was the he was third in the K1 event but they both won World Cup medals over 5,000 meters then we've got Denmark again could we see a third medal for Denmark well it's possible Simon Jensen and Morten Graveson next to them the Swedes in the yellow vest there Marcus Oskarsson here helping to coach them. That's Dennis Kernan and Martin Nathel. Nathel picked up a silver medal in the World Cup in Bernal in Russia. Then we've got Jakob Kershat and Jakob Thorsten. World Cup finalists in K1. Jakob Kershat particularly performed well in K1. And also they were fourth in the World Cup in Zeged earlier in this season, the Germans. So watch out for them. Pavel Nantvedu and Vitaly Bialko from Belarus. They're in the K2. Of course, Olympic Games, Ali Urania took the place of Vitaly Bialko. Hungary, Balintno and Tamas Kulify in seven. And then the Czechs, Thomas Sobisek and Jakob Brabek in eight. So we wait for the start, 1,000 metres of the men's K2. So underway. You can see the Germans got away to a good start there. Four from the top of your pitch yet. And then right in the middle there of the course. And you can see we're looking at lane one at the moment, but this will be so important. Here we go. Right, if we pan out, we can see lane five there. Yeah, that's the Germans in the blue boat going really well, but also two lanes to their left, the Hungarians of no and Kulify. Quite often we'll see Hungarians start a little bit steadier, but they're making no mistake this time round. They're neck and neck through the first split time, as you can see there, 46 seconds for the Germans, just behind the Hungarians, but the Swedes and the Belarusians also in touch. Now here we get a good, really good picture of the Germans. You can also get a feel for the wind there, pushing the boats along, the tailwind, making the times a little bit quicker, so we could well see times close to that 315 that we saw at the Olympic Games. The Germans Kurschat setting the rhythm in the front there and being backed up all the way with Thordson. Maybe they've just got the lead, but it's hard to say. And watch also just above the Germans on our picture now. We should have the Swedes going very, very well. Dennis Kernan and Martin Nathel. Dennis Kernan picked up, with a different partner, picked up a medal in the World Cup in Bernal. They're through the halfway mark, so a good time from them. Just over a minute and a half uh, by the Germans. Hungarians are there. The Danish now. The Danish in lane three. Simon Jensen, Morten Graveson. Morten Graveson, very experienced in the K2 previously. Has been fifth at the World Championships a few years ago with René Paulsen in the boat. So he's a really good, well-drilled paddler, and you can see the Danish working in perfect unison and they will have had a sense there that they've really got a good chance to put the germans and the swedes under pressure 
Swedes, of course, have been so, so successful down the years. Anders Gustafsson, as I said, working on the team coaching setup. And Marcus Oskarsson, they were a great partnership in K2. It's really close now. We've got the Germans, we've got the Swedes, we've got the Danes to the right of your picture. They will begin to sense the crowd as they approach the 200 meter mark. We've got 30 seconds to go in this race. Now it's down to who wants it most. And the Germans will be overcome by the Swedes. It's a long time since we saw Swedish world champions in the K2. But they're getting a feel of it now. They're building their rhythm and they're just eking out a lead over the Germans. The Germans beginning to go backwards. The Danes need to hold on to this. The Danes have a chance of taking a gold medal. Can they answer Emma Jorgensen's gold medal from the women's K1 200 meters? It's going to be close. The Swedes pick it up once again. It's down to the wire now, the last 15 strokes of this K2 1000 meter race. It is Sweden are going to take the win, a fantastic win for Sweden. Very close for second place, looks to be Denmark, indeed it is. The crowd are on their feet and the Hungarians take the bronze medal. So, another medal for Denmark with a wonderful performance from them. Timed their race to perfection. Maybe they'll be disappointed not to take the win. The crowd aren't disappointed, they are delighted. We're delighted, of course, for Dennis Kernel and Martin Nathel. It's been a while since we saw Swedish uh, world champions. But a wonderful race from them. Planned it to perfection, didn't they? Put under a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure indeed. By the Danes. The Danes take silver medal. They've got to be pleased with that. And it looked like the Hungarians coming through to third, which means that the Germans who led for so much miss out on a medal. I'll have to put that one down to experience, I think. There they are, the Germans in picture. Maybe they just used a little too much energy too early. The Swedes held on to it. Just kept the stroke long. Kept working together, driving those legs in unison, and it paid off. And here they should be down with, with Ross Solly on the podium now to find out their reaction. Sweden, our world champions. Congratulations, boys. You're pretty happy. Yeah, we're pretty happy. So what's the race? The race was uh, really good. We had a good start, I think, and uh, the last part was awesome. Now, what does it mean to be a world champion? Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's crazy. I was. I, I know we were good. Uh, I trained, so, so, but I didn't know that we're going to win, but it's awesome. Well, congratulations, world champions from Sweden. Well done. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, brilliant performance from them, wasn't it? They knew they knew they were in good form, but they're perhaps a little surprised at winning the world championships, but they took it by the scruff of the neck. It was a really great performance from them. They just looked like they were enjoying their paddling and in harmony with each other, which is so important in the K2. There's confirmation, look at that, 3.13. That's a quick time from Dennis Kernel and Martin Nathel. Simon Jensen, Morten Grafsen from Denmark in second. Great result for them. Balint Noy and Thomas Kulify from Hungary in third. 